This video is sponsored by Skillshare and Victory. The Earth needs you to write military science fiction. Join today. The galaxy teams with deadly aliens from ever-replicating killbots to insidious SUV-sized insects bent on galactic domination. We need you to join the elite few writers willing to put their very niche slice of the market on the line in order to craft only the bravest military science fiction story. So don your power armor as we write about humanity's heroic exploits as they journey through the stars. Service guarantees citizenship. Would you like to know more? Welcome to Space Boot Camp, fellow writers. It's up to terrible writing advice to help turn aspiring military science fiction authors into hardened veterans willing to use any cliche without thought. So remember, the enemy gate is down and the only good bug is a dead bug. Now, where should we start with our military sci-fi work? Now, one of the distinctive features of military sci-fi is its perspective is usually grounded with the soldier on the front lines rather than that of a civilian. This allows for the story to take on a humanistic approach and dive deep into the horrors of war, as well as explore the development of a nuanced and interesting protagonist caught in the fires of conflict and carnage. So it's only natural that we shove the main character on the back burner and focus on power armor instead. My power armor is so cool that it renders my story completely immune to even the most biting critiques from the audience. Oh, and I guess it protects the characters as well. My power armor is so amazing that it can generate new abilities on the fly with zero drawbacks. Having power armor with consistent limitations and an easy to understand rule set that the audience can follow along with would add annoying constraints to my creativity. I need my power armor to constantly generate get out of trouble free cards for my characters. Never mind that real military equipment fails all the time and often spends more time in maintenance than it does in use. But hey, who needs a high tension scene where the main characters are forced to think fast after all of their gear fails? Or capture the desperation of a situation as the characters must march off to battle in warring gear on the edge of breaking. Nah, I'm too busy going overboard with all the military tech to notice those story opportunities. Be sure to describe every weapon and piece of machinery in an excruciatingly long info dump. I could introduce this tech through field training mixed with characterization, or have two characters argue over which battle mech is the best. But I think just blaring out all this tech jargon full auto will work best. Oh look, it's my favorite tech info dump. Long-winded explanations about how faster than light travel works. Don't you worry, faster than light drive info dumps. I'm saving you for the hard sci-fi video. Now that we have pulled the terrible writing advice classic move of front-loaded exposition, it's time to move on to the least important part of military sci-fi, the characters. If a writer really wants to save effort, then just rip off all the characters from the film Aliens and then make them hyper-competent at the cost of their distinctive personalities. Nothing gets the audience invested quite like a whole squad of people who all talk and act the exact same. We must distinguish ourselves from the enemy hive mind after all with its army of identical clones. These characters would normally be part of a rigid chain of command. In most real militaries, chain of command is everything. Modern militaries tend to be heavily structured, requiring precision and discipline for even the most minor acts of daily routine. That sounds annoying, so I'm just going to ignore it just like my characters. I'm sure the audience will buy that these are full space marines and not poorly disciplined conscripts or sitcom characters. Also, be sure to have the protagonist promoted super fast, skipping several ranks in their climb to the top. Is there a wartime need for a lot of officers to justify such rapid advancement? I don't know. That would require me to actually do some world building on the state of the war and I'm far too busy promoting my self-insert, um, I mean main character, for being awesome. Now that my protagonist has went from private to five-star general in two days, I'm sure they'll keep letting him go on missions to the front lines. Using the chain of command as a way to generate conflict isn't worth all the actual reading I would have to do in order to understand how it all works. Never mind that for a lot of soldiers they fight the chain of command more than their enemy. Since we're not going to fight with the chain of command, then who will our brave space troopers face on the battlefield? Well, whoever it is, make sure they are a stand-in for COMMUNISM. That won't be dated. We could also have them fight space fundamentalists if we want to go with a post-9-11 feel. 
I guess science fiction tends to represent the fears and anxieties of the time in which it's written, so I suppose the next generation of military sci-fi antagonists will probably be social media users and cancel culture. Whatever a writer goes with, just be sure to ignore the weight and consequence of snuffing out another sapient being. Treat killing no differently than shooting a video game enemy. This goes doubly so when the main antagonists are humans. I mean, why would military fiction explore the ethics and morality of organized violence as well as the personal cost and psychological toll soldiers must pay who endure these high-stress decisions? No, we need to save that space for something far more exciting, like my political soapbox. That's right, everyone who disagrees with the author's perspective should be portrayed as a straw man in the story's lengthy political rants. Use sci-fi to explore competing ideologies, since when has science fiction done that? No time for that because I have to portray all the civilians as weak, peace-loving hippies who don't have what it takes to make the real hard decisions. They don't know what we are fighting for. The only way to stop the evil hive mind from forcing all humans to think the same is to have everyone think the same as the author. I can always go the other extreme with an anti-war message that will in no way be undermined by all the cool weapons and high-octane action drunk on power fantasy. Just be careful that these conflicts don't play out in a natural way that informs the audience on both the perspective of the characters and culture of the setting. One would think that with all of this political rambling that at least a writer could flesh out the actual politics of the war itself. At least so the writer has an understanding of what's going on in the background even if it never comes up directly in the story. But when has war had anything to do with politics? Could these long political and philosophical discourses be done between characters instead, capturing the banter that fills the long malevolent boredom between combat missions? Could they at least be made really funny? Well, no on both counts. I would rather the story be a messy vehicle for my contradictory personal philosophy rather than chronicle the far more interesting space war or explore the personal growth of the protagonist from soldier to officer. Next thing you know, people will be wanting my soldiers to use actual tactics in combat or think in 3D during space battles. Small unit tactics? Organized fire teams? Flexible tactical doctrine to deal with a variety of planet surfaces? Bah! My characters don't need tactics, that's why they have power armor for. All of my soldiers fight alone as individuals. Is this to contrast the heroic individualism against the sinister collective nature of the enemy? Well, no, mostly it's just power fantasy. Who cares about capturing the anticipation, stress, chaos, and confusion of combat? Nor does an author need to have the Space Marines work as a team to show the bonds forged in combat between soldiers. I want to remove all adversity from combat because it's not like heroism can be found in the face of adversity. The greatest adversity in military science fiction isn't the political soapboxing, the evil hive minds, or the lack of believable tactics. No, it's the small niche market share. But hey, that's okay. Military science fiction is all about sacrifice. Not for money, but for honor, courage, and country. It's about the high calling of putting one's life on the line to protect humanity, to stand up for what's right, to be a hero. Besides, so long as the protagonist is still young, we can always rebrand to young adult. All we have to do is to ship this bomb to our rivals at the Federation and send the sponsor back to the Emperor. We just shot all those rebels. We got this. Perfect. Three to five business days later. What's this? Ha! Huh. Those Imperial idiots have sent me this video sponsor, Skillshare. That's good news, General. Finally, now we can make up our budget shortfall and take the fight to the enemy. At long last, I'll get my money's worth out of that giant robot. No more bowing to those penny-pinching bureaucrats of the Federation Senate who wouldn't know a real war if it shot their conscientious objector in the face. Hello? Hey! My money sense tells me the Federation Defense Forces just got a budget boost. Yes, we just captured this video sponsor, Skillshare, through a daring and clever raid on Imperial facilities, and they shipped it to the wrong address again, didn't they? Well, we're not giving it to you regardless. Megacorp isn't getting a single penny from us. Not after that killbot you sold us killed all of my men when we turned it on. And I still don't know where that Xenomorph's wandered off to. Megacorp is not liable for 
any damages incurred by our products. Whatever. We are going to access Skillshare's online learning communities and thousands of online classes in writing, technology, productivity, and more with a premium membership. And with the sponsorship money, we'll finally be able to fund a full campaign. Well, someone should have taken Skillshare's class on bookkeeping for freelancers. How to handle your finances because sponsorship money isn't going to cut it. What? TWA fans can go to skl.sa slash TWA17 or click on the link in the description below to get two months of Skillshare for free, with the subscription being only $10 a month after that. But even if they do that, it isn't going to be enough to make up for the Federation's plummeting defense spending. Not unless you want to be burning down blue cat people world trees with generic brand napalm. Son of a war protester! This whole sponsorship war is nothing but a letdown! I swear, every time we almost have a real fight, something stupid comes along and war crime blocks the whole thing. Everyone is fighting on Twitter over branding. Just once, I would like to have a real stand-up fight, not a bunch of humanity majors pencil pushers arguing over budget. You must stop taking sponsorships. Oh, great. Now the beatnik knights are here.